Hi again, everybody, and welcome to this week's Ingalls Furman Radio Network preview of Saturday's game between the Paladins and the Stetson Hatters. I am Dan Scott, voice of the Paladins. Great to have you with us. Paladins trying to get off the schneid here in 2024, 0-2 with opening losses to Ole Miss and Charleston Southern here at home last week, while Stetson, for the fourth year in a row, has gotten off to a 2-0 start. They have wins over a pair of NAIA schools. I am Dan Scott. It is great to have you with us, as I said. Looking forward to spending the next few minutes to kind of set up what we are looking at from a radio viewpoint as uh, Tom and David and I get set to call the action here on Hall of Fame weekend at Furman University. Five uh, new inductees into the Paladin Hall of Fame will actually go in on Friday night, and uh, we'll have some of them here on Saturday as well for an official recognition. It's going to be a great weekend. Weather is a little iffy, and that is saying the least. The uh, tropical storm that has blown through Louisiana was a hurricane, now back down to a tropical storm, is bringing rain in our direction. And according to the most up-to-date forecast, we're expecting quite a bit of rain both Friday and Saturday. Hopefully that won't keep the crowd down. Hopefully some of that will blow through and we'll be able to get through play unscathed here on Saturday afternoon. Paladins, again, still looking for win one of the season. The 24-20 uh, loss last week to Charleston Southern, a game in which they turned the ball over four times. We saw the offense turned over to uh, true freshman quarterback Trey Hedden, who is expected to start this week to get his first collegiate start. And in talking with the coaches, talking with offensive coordinator Justin Roper, it's kind of what you expect with a young quarterback. You saw some really, really good things, and you saw some areas where obviously he needs to improve. I think the thing that Justin is looking at from his point of view this time is not having to bring Trey Hedden into a game where they're trailing and having to call the game from behind and having to make plays. In other words, starting the game and being able to kind of get the offense rolling, looking for better success on first and second down with the offense, looking to get the running game going against this Stetson defense. And it's a very aggressive Stetson defense. They play the 3-3-5, uh, the kind of the same style that you recall Montana played in the NCAA FCS quarterfinals last year. And uh, they play a lot of what's called zero coverage. In other words, they are going to try and bring pressure and see if you can make plays on them. And Furman's ability to throw the ball down the field, can they do that? Can Stetson play that style against that type of offense? Can Furman find ways to beat that overly aggressive defensive front, defensive style overall of the Hatters is going to be one of the things that we will be paying attention to. Stetson, as I said, they are 2-0 and for the fourth year in a row, a pair of wins over um, NAIA opponents. They're in the, the Pioneer Football League, which is D1 non-scholarship football. Brian Young is in his fourth year as the head coach. They are coming in with a 13-21 and overall record. Offensively, the Hatters are going to be very uh, familiar style-wise to Furman. They're going to go quick tempo, try to, to beat you with that tempo, throwing the ball all over the place, throw first, run second. Again, very much a Samford style of offense, so that's been the, the preparation style that Dwayne Vaughn and his defensive staff and defensive unit have been in this week, preparing for a team that likes to go up tempo. Their starting quarterback, Brady Metz, has thrown for 730 yards, eight touchdowns, and just one interception through the uh, first two games for the Hatters. And he's got a plethora of wide receivers, but the guy that has captured Dwayne Vaughn's attention most is a true freshman by the name of Ronnell Johnson, who has seven catches for 94 yards. And when they talk about the different weapons that Stetson has. He, he's a guy you hear words associated with twitch and speed and those kind of things. Good size, good route runner, and he is just a true freshman. The other area where they are really inexperienced is along their offensive line. They have a true freshman starting center in Jalen Foster, 
and they have uh, some guys from an experience standpoint by class, like redshirt junior left tackle Dawson Harrington, but he, he started – in 2023, he saw eight games in 2022, so he's their most experienced offensive lineman. But three sophomores, left guard Charles Thorpe, right guard Gabe Snyder, and right tackle Connell Walsh, all in the starting lineup on the offensive line, all saw some action as a true freshman in 2023, but uh, overall a very inexperienced offensive front for Stetson. When you flip it over to the defensive side, they have the uh, Pioneer Football League's Defensive Player of the Week at middle linebacker Kyle Elphick, who in two games has accumulated 21 tackles, three sacks, and has forced a fumble. They have, and again, you, you take level of competition into this a certain degree when you look at numbers, just like Furman's numbers are really skewed through two games because of the old Miss game. But the numbers are what they are through two games. And defensively, the Hatter is only allowing the opposition to convert third down 28.6% of the time, while offensively they have converted third down almost 55% of the time. They have sacked opposing quarterbacks nine times already and have intercepted two passes. So it's, a, it's a, an aggressive defensive unit, as we talked about. And from a defensive side, uh, or from Furman's defensive side, going to be looking to get back into that mode where they are the ones taking the ball away. The last two years, number one and number three in the nation, respectively, in the FCS in taking the ball away, have not forced a turnover yet this season. And, and Clay Hendricks was was very, um, very forthright about the, the way that game against Charleston Southern played out, he, he said in his press conference, and he told me this week, that, you know, sometimes it's okay to punt the football. And if you punt the football twice instead of turning it over twice, you probably win that game. Dwayne Vaughn took it a step further from the defensive side. He told me, you know, if we take it away twice, we probably win that game as well. They did not, and now the Paladins still looking for win number one of the season. Furman had its 10-game home winning streak snapped in the loss to Charleston Southern last week. Still have the seven-game conference winning streak intact, and that will be tested in a couple of weeks when Sanford comes in here. These teams have played twice, but you've got to go all the way back to 1951 and 1952, and Stetson won both of those games, 21-20 in Greenville in 1951 and 25-14 in DeLand in 1952, so the Paladins will be looking for win number one in this brief series with the Hatters. Taking a look at what else is going on in the SoCon, first the standings, of course, no league games yet, but as we look at where SoCon teams are, Mercer and Wofford are both 2-0 and out of the gate. Wofford may be the, the surprise there. ETSU and the Citadel are both 1-1, one and one. And then Furman and everybody else, Chattanooga, Western Carolina, Sanford, VMI, all 0-2 to start the season. The schedule for this week, Citadel will play its first home game at Johnson Haygood. They host D2 North Greenville at noon. Besides our game with Stetson at 2 o'clock, VMI will be at Georgia Tech at 3.30. ETSU hosting North Dakota State at 5.30 p.m. William & Mary... Furman's road opponent next week comes to Wofford for a 6 o'clock kick. Western Carolina goes to Elon, also a 6 o'clock kick. And the first league game of the season will kick off at 6 o'clock as Chattanooga entertains Mercer. Samford, a 7 p.m. Eastern kick at home against Alabama State. So again, our kickoff is 2 p.m., uh, on Saturday here at Powelton Stadium, that means that the uh, Pepsi countdown to kickoff via the Fan Upstate will begin at 12.30 p.m. You can listen to the broadcast live, 97.7.1 FM in Greenville, 97.7 uh, in Greenville, 97.1 in Spartanburg, and online at odyssey.com in the Odyssey app. The game will be televised via ESPN+. And we look forward to having you in the stadium if at all possible, for Hall of Fame weekend. If you can't make it, then we've got you covered 
with the broadcast information. Looking forward to this one. Looking forward to getting Furman's first win of the season if all goes according to plan. And then after this, just one more non-conference game on the road next week at William & Mary. And then it is Southern Conference play for the final eight games of 2024. And that, of course, is going to be the biggest indicator for any postseason for Clay Hendricks' club. Thank you for joining us. Again, if you can't make it, we've got you covered on the radio broadcast beginning at 12.30 p.m. with the Pepsi countdown to kick off. Until Saturday, I'm Dan Scott. God bless you, and so long, everybody.